This is a classic example of where you need to summarize this data because it's just too much. Like, I don't know anything really just by looking at this set of data, okay? One of the first ways that we can sort of prepare the data before we interpret it is to say, well, I suppose we could work out the mean. I suppose we could do that. We could work out median or range. We know how to do all of those things. But if you found out the mean, you could strip out a lot of valuable information there. For example, remember I said before, Here's a set of four scores, and they have the mean that we were interested in before, 12. Okay. Here's another set of scores. It has the same mean, but I would argue it's a very different set of data. It's got characteristics that completely separate it from the other one. Does that make sense? So even though I could find out the mean, and it will probably give me something useful, I'm probably going to miss out a lot too. So before I get to there, sort of an intermediate step, to be able to understand, know the difference in meaning between this and this, the first thing, the first skill we're going to look at is grouping. Now we've looked at grouping before, so I'm trying to actually jog your memory a little bit. So you can see down the bottom here, what they're asking us to do first is, take these 48 scores, I'm not going to ask you to write them up, so I'm going to leave it up there. But can we organize them into groups such that we have groups of 10, like uh, 0 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, and so on, right? And we would use like a tally for that, right? That might be useful, or we might decide, actually that's too fine detail still, there's still too much information there. Maybe we want to go and zoom out even further, okay? We group data because that way we can see everything better. You do lose information though. Every time you sort of go down this way, like if you're looking at a graph, you clearly don't have all of the fine individual numbers, you're just getting it overall, okay? But these are all more useful to be able to interpret it and get some meaning out of it. So I'm gonna start us, just to get your mind going, by leaving this data up here. I suggest you draw up for yourself a table. On the left-hand side, you want these groups of 10, okay? We call these classes. So there's the 0 to 10 class, the 11 to 20 class, the 21 to 30, is this ringing some bells? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, okay. So we'll label those classes, and then we'll keep a tally as we go from left to right on the data that we've got here, and we'll see if we can get some meaning out of this. So, you might notice, and this, I'm very glad people notice. can you see, if you set up your table like mine, that will look ever so slightly different to this. What's the difference? Well, that's zero. It's the start and end point, okay? Now, let me just point out, think about this, because I need you I need you to get away from what's the what's the right answer to what's the point of doing this, right? DS1, you get data. DS2, you have a look at what it might be represented like visually. Uh, DS3, you summarize it. For DS4, what's the point? What are we getting at? What are we searching for? Patterns. We're looking for patterns, trends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's exactly the point that I'm talking about right now. So, the fact that it's different doesn't disguise the fact that do you have a shape that looks like this? Do you have it? And the reason why is because if you move all these brackets up one or down one, it's still the same data and the shape is still there. So it doesn't matter what the class is. Not really, but the size of the class matters a lot. Hey, hey, Georgia. Okay, are you guys ready? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Okay. So, I'll I'll come back to this and I will show you what page it's on. But I just want to point out. Okay, well, what is useful about this, right? And what's useful is I can see meaning here in here. This shape, by the way, is really really important. I've mentioned it before. It's called the normal distribution. DS five is called the normal distribution. So we're going to be studying that a lot. It's really great. It's actually something I think all the two in the extension ones really miss out on, and I'm glad you guys are here. Okay, after you draw this thing, the follow-up question is, just like DS2 said, uh, what does it look like? How can I draw it? So I'm going to save you a bit of time. I don't need you to draw it right now. These are what the graphs would look like if you drew these. Now, can anyone tell me, what are these called? What do we call these? So we call these, the proper name is a frequency histogram. Now this is really important. We distinguish between a histogram versus a bar chart. 
Now, this is a bit weird. I wonder if you are thinking back to um, DS2, right? Uh, one of the key differences is, do you see all of these columns? They're all just shoved right up against each other. There's no gaps between them, okay? Now, that's not just arbitrary. Why aren't there gaps? So, that's why you can see, like, the bigger the bigger you can see. Okay, so number one, I think it does look a little easier. You can see the shape of it. There's another reason though. Actually, there's more than one reason. Space is a thing, I suppose. What are you comparing to? Okay, so let's just imagine. Can you just picture for a second? If these bars here were all just vertical lines instead of bars. Okay, like bar, 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 bar. I feel like I could still compare them. What other reason is there? Yeah. What do you mean by all one thing? So, say, if they're all scores, yep. and my groupings get like that, you're aware that they're similar kind of... Yeah, 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 cool, okay. And if they're so, spaced out, you would think that you think them as separate things. Yeah, alright, so let me give you a perfect example of where you would do a bar chart with separation as opposed to a histogram. I had something like this. Uh, maybe I could say sales, and I could say something like this. Um, I'm drinking. Yeah, I see you drinking as well. What is it actually? Whatever. Okay. So, if this is what the canteen sold over the course of a normal day, sushi, drinks, sausage rolls. I'm hungry. Can you tell? Okay. Um, do you see that even though all these things are sales? So I guess they represent money or something like that. They really are quite separate to one another. Does that make sense? It's not like, oh yeah, there's the sushi drinks category, right? This is not, they're not common things. I'm trying to compare them, but as I was trying to get at, right? They're not the same kinds of things like these are all scores in a class. Does that make sense? Uh, there's one more thing I want to add, which is these are, um, they're not individual scores. They're classes, remember that? So there's actually a whole range within each of these bars. So having a sort of width to that and having no gaps sort of helps us see it.